Hello everyone! I am going to be doing for this underrated film Saturday a film that is actually by one of the most famous directors of all time, Steven Spielberg. Um, and I think this film in particular is rather underrated because I don't hear a lot of people talking about this film. I don't hear it really referenced all that often. It's almost kind of faded away and I think it holds a, a, a an interesting uh, significance, especially the topic that it's ultimately addressing. And as you can see by the title, this movie is Munich. Now this, um, now this movie, um, takes place around the events of the 1972 Summer Olympics. And basically what ended up happening during those Olympics is just that there were various people who were killed and shot and, and, um, basically, um, these people, I believe, were, um, Israeli or had ties with Israel, the victims that were killed, and this resulted in the Israeli government, tr um, trying to um, bring sort of the uh, people who committed these atrocities to justice, and um, basically, the it was it was supposedly alleged that the people who did commit these crimes were part of the Palestine Liberation Organization, and uh, and that they were responsible for uh, for the killings. So, uh, ultimately, the government, the Israeli government, sets up this operation to basically go and take the assassins out. And, basically, the person who ultimately ends up being our main character through this film is named Avner Kaufman, who's played by Eric Bana. And he's basically chosen by the Israeli government to go out and do this particular task, although there's an eventual sort of break-off between the two, and you'll sort of see this as the film goes on, but, uh, but basically, he is the head of the assassination. So basically, they're trying to avenge an assassination by committing an assassination, and, um... And Eric Bana's character is not alone here. We have he has Steve, who's played by Daniel Craig. Um, I think he's from South Africa. Um, there's a Belgian toy maker and explosive exer expert, Robin, who's played by Matthew Kasovitz. And then there's a former Israeli soldier and cleaner, Carl, played by Syrian. And then there is a Danish document forger named Hans, who's played by Hans Zeichler. And Hans, though, is spelled differently, so <laughs> I guess you can't really say that they're the exact same name. But um, basically, this film focuses in on their attempts to try and figure out who the assassins are, and basically take them out. And it is it is sort of a story that's designed on, on revenge, on this idea that, um, that, uh, that, that with revenge sort of comes justice. So, so really that's, I think, a, a huge focus of the film, and how that, that ultimately is that those kinds of uh, things are ultimately tested by sort of the character's kind of morality and um, and understanding what's what's ultimately the the right thing to do and uh, and they and they're sort of I guess torn by the by the violence and and by sort of the bloodshed that's caused by you know these two sides and. In particular, Israel and Palestine have had various, various problems over the years, and it it really is showcased this this um, 
of this this violence. And I guess I could say that this film might be underrated because, um, again, it's not one of Spielberg's more well-known works. I think it's also a little bit more darker than his usual films. Uh, Spielberg's known for being very upbeat and energetic and happy, you know, like Indiana Jones, E.T., you know, that they're, they're designed to be very uplifting, kinds of optimistic, you know, uh, energizing kind of films. And this this film is, is nothing like traditional Shakespeare. Uh, it, it's it's very dark. It's very brooding. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of violence and um and it's not really designed on heroism, which is really Spielberg's sort of trademark. It's designed in sort of revenge and this um and this idea of of um providing sort of justice for the injustice that was done to those that were massacred. Uh, at the at the Summer Olympics. So, uh, that I think is something that probably confused um, moviegoers because, again, this is not something that's traditionally Shakespeare or traditionally Spielberg. Um, so I guess that's why I think it's it's kind of overlooked and, and, and not as appreciated. But I think it definitely is a film that is worth exploring, especially with the story that it has, and I think Spielberg has always been big on this idea of story and bringing out truths, um, in particular, you know, with, like, Schindler's List and things like that, and I will say that sh although Schindler's List is rather dark, there's a lot of, there's still the sense of kind of optimism and hope and uplift, um, and it, and it brings this uplifting kind of sense that was throughout such trials and tribulations and, you know, there, there is still good people that can come out of such horrors. So that's what I think Spielberg has had throughout a lot of his films and trademarks. But I don't think this film really explores it all that much. I think it really just, it really just brings out the dark and grim of the entire situation and story that it's trying to present. And it kind of, you know, it kind of just leaves you hollow because you know the main character has to basically do something that ultimately his assassins did, but again, he's conflicted because he thinks that it's sort of, you know, it's, it's justifiable because they did something wrong to us. So, again, there is a lot of, I think, I think these, this, this, it gives, I think the movie gives really a cold shoulder to, to revenge and to, um, and, and to initiating violence because it, it doesn't ultimately end up solving the problem. And I think that was really what Shakespeare or, excuse me, what Spielberg was trying to go for. Um, so it doesn't really end on a really uplifting or um, hopeful, you know, kind of triumphant moment, you know. It's it's not like Schindler's List where we see all of these people who ended up surviving, you know, going out and being finally liberated. Um, it's It doesn't really provide you that uplifting kind of traditional Shakespeare or... <laughs> Spielberg, I keep mixing these two up. It doesn't provide you a traditional kind of Shakespeare film or the Spielberg film. Film. It provides you with a with a very dark take onto um, onto revenge, onto justice, and onto violence. And it doesn't really provide you that traditional uplifting um, aspect that has been present in a lot of Spielberg-oriented films. So I think that's probably why it kind of got put under the bus as a result. Um, but ultimately, I think that's really all I can say about this film. Uh, if there are any questions, comments, concerns, I'd be more than happy to answer them. But I think that's ultimately all I can say without giving anything away as to, you know, who lives, who dies, you know, all of those trials and tribulations. So uh, that's all that I can, but I think that's really all I can bring up. Thank you all so much for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next video. And I just wanted to say, in case in case somebody hasn't watched my most recent videos, I'm going to be gone next week. I'm not going to be making videos next week. But after next week, I will be back making videos. So, 
take care, and I hope you have all a great day, week, month, and year, and goodbye.